science goes to the movies, a look at the stories of science and how they change our culture. I'm Lisa Beth Kovitz. Today, we're going to look at how two versions of Star Trek Starship engines address speed of light limitations as they cross the galaxy. We're joined by Dr. Ethan Siegel, theoretical astrophysicist and author of Beyond the Galaxy and Technology. The Science of Star Wars from Tricorders to Warp Drives. You can find a shorter works on Forbes, Wall Street Journal, Scientific America, just to name a few. Welcome, Ethan. Yeah, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. In Star Trek Discovery, the spore drive requires a dip into something they call subspace. And interestingly, the concept of subspace appears only in three places, Star Trek, the BDSM community, and mathematics. For this discussion, we're gonna skip the s and and focus on the maths. What is, what is subspace in mathematics, and does that reality have anything at all to do with how Star Trek is using the concept? Okay, so in, in math and in physics, right, we have this concept of, of space, and in Einstein's theory, where you also have time there, we have this concept of space-time, and it's like, the fabric of the universe. You put down matter and energy and it curves space-time and that curved space-time then tells all the other forms of matter and energy in there, how do you move? The idea that there would be some sort of subspace would mean that, okay, okay, most of the things, all the things we've observed in the universe, they go in the regular space and the regular space-time and they obey the rules we're used to, but maybe, I can put down like some sort of imaginary shadow over space and maybe some of the things in our universe can go into like this alternate set of rules, this alternate form of space time and they can, you know, exit our universe, go into subspace and come back out or they can abide by some of the rules of normal space time and some of the rules of this, you know, subspace and maybe you can do something interesting with that. This is basically saying like, okay, we have the normal rules and we don't like what they give us, so let's put down something that has some other rules that isn't necessarily incompatible with what we've seen so far, and maybe we can do some real interesting things with that. But mathematically, is the concept of subspace, it sounds like it's a placeholder for, uh, for what you eventually will figure out later. Is, am, I, am I misunderstanding it or is... So, so what you're saying is, you know, hey, like, we don't have any, like, experimental proof that subspace exists. We don't have, like, observational evidence for it, right? And that's fair. But you have to remember that a lot of these ideas, a lot of these sci-fi ideas that we've had for a long time, um, they predate physical discoveries of how we make it possible. So when we say, oh, I want to communicate faster than light, yeah, of course we do. Relativity doesn't allow that, but maybe there's a clever way that we can get there. Maybe there's a clever way to achieve that. And if the concept of subspace has any relevance for our real universe, maybe that's the key to unlocking it. I am happy for you guys to, to work it out, and I just can't wait to, to reap the benefits of what you figure out. <laughs> 